We are the God Culture, a group of independent researchers with no affiliation to any denomination nor organization whatsoever. We read the word and we test it as 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. The time has come that we all understand this highly debated topic of the Sabbath. Yes, we are in this age. This video will be foundation, and the next will systematically explain the Sabbath origin, which was not Moses. Then let's see what Messiah says about it and what he does in action indeed, which cannot be reformed because he did what he did and he said what he said, period. The apostles ring through with a tremendous endorsement even in action as well. The early church history shows them keeping the Sabbath even in Catholic records. Oops. The question becomes, if Messiah did not abolish it, nor any apostle, who exactly has ever been given such authority to overrule them? Oh, we're going to deal with Peter along the way, because that is another fraudulent interpretation of Scripture to justify a Pope position which is against Scripture, and we'll get there. Again, this is foundation, though, but we will cover all of this fully in this series. Let's start with Scripture. Let's start in the beginning with Genesis 2, and on the 7th Sheba, Shabu, day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested, Shabbat, Sabbath, on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Now, we showed you in a previous video, we're not going to cover it in this one, although we will get there in other parts of the series. Catholic scholars actually claiming the Bible doesn't ever mention the word Sabbath until Moses. But they are only aware of the English. This word rested is Sabbath, Shabbat, same in Hebrew. And this is the origin of the Sabbath. Now we will cover and really entrench this in the next video especially. And God blessed the seventh day, Shabu, Sheba, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested, Shabbat, Sabbath in Hebrew, from all his work which God created and made. Now that's Elohim in Hebrew, not God, but good enough. What does it mean that Yahuwah sanctifies something? It means he set it apart. It is holy and different. From what in this case? Well, this is about the days of the week in which the seventh day is set apart. Does this no longer matter? Let's be clear. All of creation has always and always will matter. And this is what Peter warned us in 2 Peter chapter 3 would happen in our age, and you're seeing it even in much of the church. Now let's fast forward to the New Testament, and let's see what Messiah says about this. Messiah said in Mark 2, 27 and 28, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man, now he's talking about himself, that title is used often, and it actually originates in, well, Daniel uses it once, but it originates in the book of Enoch. Go look it up. The Son of Man is the Lord also of the Sabbath. Wow. Who made and gave the Sabbath day of rest? Yahuwah did with Yahusha. They both created. Even Moses says so. Exodus, etc. He made Sabbath for man. Get that. Think about creation. Was man made after the Sabbath? No, he was made before the Sabbath. 
Man was created on day six, and then day seven, the Sabbath day of rest. For just Yahuwah? No, for all. For all of his creation. I mean, come on. He just rested, and Adam is in his presence, but Adam's not resting. He's breaking the Sabbath, really? Does that make any sense? Well, no, it doesn't, and we'll show you evidence that that most certainly is not the case. For just Yahuwah to rest, and that's it. Nonsense. Yahusha says, He made the Sabbath for man. It is a day of rest for us, for man. Would he then abandon it? Just chapters later? Does that make any sense in any logical framework at all? Especially when he doesn't abandon it? And neither do his disciples after him? And neither does the early church? See, this is very problematic for that view. Well, here he really throws down the gauntlet on the Sabbath, and this gets very confused. However, we will show you Messiah kept the Sabbath, and so did his apostles after him. Thus, he is not saying here he replaced the Sabbath with some spiritual voodoo, as we actually had someone comment <laughs> to that ilk. At this time, the Sabbath is most certainly a physical practice, and it remains such after Messiah. Thus, it does not get transformed into a spiritual experience. It is spiritual, it has always been spiritual, but of a physical nature in origin. You keep physically the Sabbath. That's how it works. Yahushua says he is the Lord of the Sabbath. What? Is he declaring himself just then? Did he just take on that title, Lord of the Sabbath, in Mark 2? Absolutely not. And that is one of the largest fallacies. John 1 is clear. In the beginning was the Word. Before he was in the flesh as a man, he was in the beginning. He was there. And by him all things were created, and nothing, including the Sabbath, was created without him involved. Nothing. The Sabbath is part of the creation narrative. It was created on the seventh day, and Yahusha was part of creating it. In other words, he was Lord of the Sabbath from the beginning. Not beginning in Mark chapter 2. This is a Pharisee mindset, which diminishes his role as creator. That's what it truly is, which is also why they got rid of the book of Jubilees, which also tells you that. And we're going to cover a little bit of that in this video even, because it does talk about the Sabbath many times. I think something like 54 times. I mean, it really talks about the Sabbath. So, does any theologian realize this? Likely not. But once again, we are looking at occult infiltration in paradigms. And see, they are educated into that framework of a paradigm. And then they don't see beyond that box that they've been boxed into. And it's in the church. And it's been even doctrine, unfortunately. Now for the hard question. Is Yahusha our Lord, truly? Well, he is Lord of the Sabbath. So how can you ever separate him nor his worship from his Sabbath in which he says he is Lord? They actually try to frame that this means he replaced the Sabbath. But again, that would mean he did not exist in the beginning which is against Scripture and attacks his deity, as Pharisee Levin often does. That is not a scholarly position in any sense, regardless of how much consensus it may have garnered by deceived people. They are simply conceding to be ignorant. No, thank you. If one told you they are Lord of something, and you make them your Lord, then you better treat that which they are Lord of with respect, right? This requires Messiah, Lord of the Sabbath, 
to be the source of anything that would change the Sabbath practice in any sense? What? The day cannot change without the Lord of the Sabbath changing it. No one else can have such authority. The worship cannot change unless he changed it. We will prove neither of those factors exist. Not in Scripture. And in fact, in two videos, we will deal with those who claim Messiah broke the Sabbath. Head on, as he never broke his Sabbath, and he cannot. If he does, he is no longer Lord of it. That's how that actually works in dynamic. And that cannot, nor did it happen. He broke Pharisee additives of leaven in the Sabbath, falsely attributed. Extra rules, not his own. When the disciples were hungry and had nothing to eat, it was permissible for them to eat. And that remains and always was the case. Only Pharisee legalism, leaven, would say otherwise. And that is what Yahushua was fighting and exposed and rebuked many times. When he healed on the Sabbath, and we'll cover this, he did not break any law, as doing good on the Sabbath was always permissible and remains so to this day and always will be. We'll get to that all of it in detail. See, here's the massive challenge for anyone claiming Messiah did away with the law. He said he did not, and he would not. Here that is. Many of us have seen this before. Matthew 5.17. We love this scripture because these are the words of Messiah, and they are so clear they can't be taken out of context. Oh, they try, but they can't. Think not, don't think, that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. What did the prophets write? The Old Testament. He's endorsing the Old Testament, period. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So he's here to fulfill the Old Testament, the law and the prophets. Does that mean he does away with them? Well, Here's what he says. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Wait, when does that happen? On the day of final judgment. That's the day in scripture, according to Revelation, when heaven and earth are made anew. That's when they pass away and they're made new. Has that happened? No. Therefore, this is still here, still in action, still valid. To this day, one iota, the word in Hebrew is never jot, that's not even a Hebrew word or letter, nor is it Greek, it's iota, and it's an I to us, or one tittle, T, let's say, so, you know, you dot your I's, cross your T's, you've heard that, that's where that comes from. A lot of those idioms come from scripture, originally. They get twisted and changed all kinds of ways, but that's where they come from many times. So, one I, one T, shall in no wise pass from the law. Boom. So they don't pass from the law. When? Till all be fulfilled. Wait, when is all fulfilled? Not until heaven and earth pass on the day of final judgment. See, his work is a work in progress. He is still fulfilling the law. He's still keeping it. Heaven is still keeping the Sabbath. Why aren't we? He came to fulfill the law, which has always included the Sabbath, by the way, as it is the fourth commandment. But it's also cited throughout Scripture outside of the commandments even. And again, we'll show you, it really goes all the way back to creation. We've already started, but we're going to go whole video on that coming. So not one letter of the law will pass until the day of final judgment. The law is still with us. Now some say, oh, well, uh, that you were redeemed from the curse of the law of sin and death. The law is not the law of sin and death. That is a very specific reference. My goodness, to say that all of those years 
that Moses was instituting the law of sin and death? You gotta be kidding. That is not scripture, that is not a valid interpretation of scripture, it is not scholarly, it is not even educated, it is illiterate to ever say such. Now we're going to cover this all. There is no verse from Paul which can overrule this passage, nor does Paul ever do so in context. When you read him properly, Colossians 2, Romans 14, also in Galatians where they take these fragments pieces of a scripture, pieces of an entire uh, oration of Paul, where he's going on and on and on. And in context, it's so clear he is not referring to abolishing the Sabbath. That is a ridiculous notion, but they'll use it that way, out of context with Pharisee leaven. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Do we not all want to be great in his kingdom? If you are a pastor, thank Yahuwah for your willingness to serve. We know your heart is likely in the right place, and we don't question that, not even remotely. We understand what you're taught in seminary. We've been there. But if you are teaching men to break his commandments, and you are as well, you will be the least in his kingdom, no matter how much of a servant of all you might be. And this is not that scripture, by the way. This is Messiah saying, you teach people to break my commandments, and you will be the least in my kingdom. It's time for all of us to awaken, my friends, and mature past these control lines that have infiltrated the church. Root them out. Get them out of there. Now let's deal with the paradigm of the New Testament, to which much of the church seems, unfortunately, oblivious. And this should not be the case. It just should not. But see, the church is too busy teaching A hollow, shallow love. Love your neighbor. A love on, brother. Yeah, we've heard it all, especially in the megachurch. But you know what? They leave rebuke out of it. They leave the ability for you to defend the gospel. What? You're not allowed to defend the gospel because that's not love? Well, that kind of love is not love at all. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, is Messiah saying Pharisees are righteous? Not even remotely. He's telling you that what they think is righteousness is not going to even get them into heaven. Therefore, it's not righteousness at all. That's what he's saying. He most certainly never says they are righteous. In fact, he calls them hypocrites and their oral traditions against his commandments. And they render the word of none effect in Mark 7. Why would he then say they are righteous? And in an example, oh, just be like those Zoroastrian priests. Uh, Nope, he's not saying that. Never did, never will. Doesn't happen. On the contrary. He is saying their game of righteousness, where they try to show such in front of men, he says this many times, is vanity. He knows their hearts are not pure, and they're not keeping righteousness as righteousness goes. He is not saying don't keep his law, but the opposite. Truly keep it with your heart, with purity of heart. Because the Pharisees do not. To not understand that in the context of this passage is just plain to not understand the entire New Testament and the Bible. Not to get, but because you love him, you keep his commandments, just as he says in John 15. And his commandments, not the Pharisee manipulations which he rebukes and breaks because 
He wants to be clear that their manipulations are not his Sabbath, his law at all. He is firing a direct shot at the Pharisees here in this passage and condemning their ways as not righteous and not his and against his commandments. Pharisee law is legalism and a burden. His law is neither. He does not peddle leaven. They do. And did you know the New Testament endorses and practices the Sabbath? Oops. This is Hebrews, written after Messiah's ascension. And look what it says. Keeping the Sabbath is actually an example of a believer. And not keeping it is unbelief. Ouch. There remaineth therefore a rest, Sabbath. How do we know? Keep reading. To the people of God, Elohim, Yahuwah. Remember, this is Hebrews, not the Old Testament. This is the New Covenant, not the Old Covenant. And Sabbath is still there. Right there. But keep reading. For he that is entered into his rest, Sabbath, we'll show you, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Wait, the example of this Sabbath that Hebrews is talking about is not Moses. When did Yahuwah cease from his work? On the seventh day of creation, thus Hebrews is referencing a practice that began at creation and not with Moses and continues in the time after Messiah. This doesn't even mention Moses, but creation as the origin of this practice. Oops. Let's continue. Let us labor. That's work, right? No. You cannot work on the Sabbath. So is he saying to work? No, he's talking about effort. Labor to what? Therefore to enter into that rest, Sabbath. It can't be work and Sabbath at the same time. So why is this in conflict? Well, because of interpretation, of course, because there are those that try to define things that the Bible says are not work, such as developing relationship with him on the Sabbath. That's not work. That's what we're supposed to do on the Sabbath. Therefore, it is never considered work in Scripture. Neither is keeping the Sabbath. That's not work or works. That is ridiculous. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Those attempting debate will skip over this one, of course, as they do very many, to arrive at their conclusions. See, if we are not keeping the Sabbath, it is an example of unbelief in the New Testament after Messiah's ascension as a part of the New Testament covenant. Wow. Frankly, we are already at case closed, but we will support this many times over because this is too important to leave at a point and counterpoint debate, which is why we're not allowing for such. We are going to cover this in such great detail that it will be overwhelming. Don't worry. There are 137 scriptures with the word Sabbath, not to mention the concept and others. And many of those appear in the New Testament, in fact. Ezekiel calls the Sabbath a sign between us and Yahuwah. Is that not the same thing we just saw Hebrews say? A sign of unbelief if you don't keep the Sabbath, or turn it around, a sign of belief between us and him. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and hollow my Sabbaths. How do we go from hollow my Sabbaths, remember my Sabbaths, observe my Sabbaths, even unto death if you do not in Israel, to, oh, it's not important, doesn't matter, la, 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 who cares? 
doesn't matter what the Bible says, because that's really what they're saying. As the Bible says, it's still instituted and never ended. That's what it says. We'll show you. And they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord Yahuwah, your God Elohim. Now, people ask at times, how do we know we are saved? Well, are you keeping his Sabbath? That is the sign of one who is saved and in relationship with him. Sorry, we tell the truth here. Isaiah 58, 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, but now it's not holy anymore? Wouldn't that require scripture abandoning it? It would, wouldn't it? It's still holy. And call the Sabbath a delight. It's not a burden. It's a delight. The holy of the Lord, Yahuwah, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways. That's what this is all about. That's what the Sabbath is about. See, we, mankind, we want to do our own ways. We want to do what we want to do. Just like a snot-nosed little child. That's the attitude that's being employed. Yet, we're to do what He wants us to do. We're to do His ways. This is about Him. This is about His end of the relationship, not us. Nor finding thine own pleasure. Pleasure on the Sabbath is not ours to have, except for pleasure in Him. Nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, Yahuwah. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. Why was Israel blessed? Why were they so blessed? Have you ever thought about that? Because they were keeping his commands. They were keeping his Sabbath and the blessings that go with that came to them as a result. This isn't a name it, claim it gospel. But when you do his ways, he rewards you. And feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father for the mouth of of the Lord Yahuwah hath spoken it. This is from his lips. So, those that wish to debate, show me one scripture where Yahuwah ever said to no longer keep his Sabbath. Show me one scripture where Yahusha says to abandon the Sabbath. You will never find it, and that word better come from their mouths and no one else. Because there's no one with authority to overrule this, period. And Messiah never did. This topic is really at the heart of the matter, about man wanting to abide in his own ways. It's all about you, 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 you. It's not. This is about Yahuwah. The very doctrine from the Garden of Eden is what we're up against in this. See, Satan's, that is, he said to Eve, you shall be as gods. Well, we are not gods, and we will not be as gods. We do not get to change his worship. Only he can. We cannot infuse it into other religions, which has been done in the church even today. He always rejects that at all times in Scripture, period. You will never find a time where he says it's okay to Catholicize or Christianize and redeem a pagan practice. That's nonsense. That is sheer illiteracy, biblically. We abide in his ways, and he changes not. And Yahushua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And yesterday is creation. And that's Hebrews 13.8 as well. Or we do not abide in him. Ouch. Here's Isaiah 56. So Isaiah again. Blessed is the man that 
doeth this, and the Son of Man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Not keeping Sabbath pollutes his holy day established on the seventh day of creation. As we showed you in the trailer, there are so many Sabbath scriptures, but it is defined as forever in your generations for a perpetual and everlasting covenant by a statute forever. How exactly could anyone then say it passes away and claim to represent scripture? They cannot, unless they can produce a scripture which says exactly that, and you will never find a single one. We will address all of those that they claim do, and none of them even remotely do. In fact, they don't even mention the Sabbath in most of them. Well, we will deal with this in more detail. Sabbath was never abolished by Messiah, but endorsed and practiced by him, nor by Paul, but endorsed and practiced by him, not by Luke, nor any apostle, but endorsed and practiced by them. We have a major problem here, because the church generally doesn't get this anymore. They have lost this revelation, and that is a sad day. We'll cover this in an entire video, but here are a few scriptures on the screen that you can begin with. Yahuwah even stopped manna on the Sabbath, raining down a double portion on Friday so the Israelites could truly keep his Sabbath on Saturday. In fact, in Israel, neglecting or breaking the Sabbath meant death even. This was serious, folks, and that nation took it very seriously for a while, and unfortunately, they went away from it, they went whoring after other gods, and they paid the price and still are to this day. I'll hit you with a few of these up front, so we cover some in the very beginning, but we're going to deal with this in an entire video. Paul consistently kept the Sabbath and the law and taught such, including the feasts the biblical feasts. He says, on the contrary, we establish the law. That's Romans 3.31. Paul wrote that. I delight in the law of God. That's Paul in Romans 7.22. Therefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. That's Paul in Romans 7.12. For anyone calling themselves a scholar to then attempt to make a case that Paul preached against the law or called himself a Judaizer and a hypocrite is absolutely illiterate, biblically speaking. We have a whole video coming on this, so we will deal with this head on. Don't worry. You will see Paul keeps the law and the Sabbath, and he was no hypocrite at all. You know, there are even those who are trying to remove Paul's writings from their doctrine as a result of this manipulation in interpretation even. But see, they're guilty of this same when they do that. Peter warned us 2,000 years ago that Paul's words were being twisted and taken out of context even way back then. So it's no surprise that Pharisee Levin from the synagogue of Satan remains in circulation today and his further expanded. No surprise at all. The unfortunate thing is, it is called church doctrine in many churches today. Ugh. We will test it and prove this out. So what is the Sabbath? How do we keep it? This is the truly amazing thing. It's not actually that hard to keep. And since when is it such a bad thing? to teach people to spend a day with you. Who I mean, how dare we? Oh, what a terrible, terrible group we are to tell people to spend time with Yahuwah. That's awful. Don't do that. That's really the position. Come on, let's break it down. Some will note the Sabbath included sacrifices, both incense and animals, and indeed it did, especially in the temple days. Yes, absolutely, no doubt. That is fact. However, there is no temple right now, for one, and Yahushua became a sacrifice for us in Scripture many times over. We'll cover this. 
So it's already made. The sacrifice has been made. But that does not in any sense abolish the Sabbath just because he's our Sabbath sacrifice. He did not fulfill the sacrifice so that you and I would no longer have to spend time with him. That doesn't make any sense, but the opposite is true. He made it even easier to keep the Sabbath. And that is a wonderful thing. Yet, some say it's so hard. No, it's not. It's a sacrifice on our part. A sacrifice of time. And there are some things that, yeah, you'll have to get used to. But they are not hard. Nor are they a burden. When you start keeping the Sabbath, you will find in time, if if not right away, it is the biggest blessing of your life. Relationship with him really begins right there. I can attest to that personally. I thought I knew the Bible. I didn't. I knew what seminaries teach. I knew the doctrines of men pretty well. But I didn't know scripture until I spent true time in true relationship with him. And he started to reveal one thing after the other. Relationship with him really begins right there. You are telling him he is more important to you than anything. And let's be frank, none of us are too busy for Yahuwah. I know, we can say that. I've said it. I was so busy in the church, doing this, doing that, going here, going there, ministering even. But too busy to spend the time with him. And now, I'm the opposite. I spend the time with him first because he's more important to me. And that's the way it should be. He keeps the entire world and universe in check. What exactly did you do in the past 24 hours? He kept the oceans from not freezing, from not enveloping the earth and going haywire. He kept enough oxygen for you to breathe. What did you do? What did I do? We are nothing in comparison. We are nobody, which is why we need to recognize his sovereignty and his ways, his Sabbath above all. Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments. This is right in the middle of the commandments. Number four, in fact. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why does he say remember? See, Israel and mankind had forgotten it. Oh, here is an important point. How do they remember something which never existed until that point? Well, that wouldn't make any sense, would it? And it doesn't make any sense sense. These people are not reading scripture or representing it. Even the language Yahuwah used was very specific. And remember, he wrote the Ten Commandments, not Moses. He wrote them on tablets with his finger. Moses just copied that. Did he know what he was talking about when he used the word remember? Of course he did. Six Days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, Yahuwah thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Gentiles, hello, This has never been a Jewish practice. It has never been exclusive, but always available to the stranger among you. And we'll go through those scriptures as well. It's there many times, not just once. First, Sabbath means no work. That's what Sabbath is. It's a day of no work. Now, we'll go through some of the definitions. But what a terrible thing to tell people not to work for a day, right? And it does not just apply to you, but your entire household, including servants or employees, anyone on your property, and that always included the stranger or Gentile. 
Again, not a Jewish practice. In fact, the word Jew, not even a Bible word. So why don't we restore the Bible? Watch the Name of God series for clarity on that. It's Yahudim, not Jew. Never Jew. Can't be shortened to Jew, which cannot be an ancient Hebrew word in any sense. It's his people with his name branded in theirs. Who would change that? Well, only those who are not his people, of course. And that's what we're talking about. And that's who's changed the Sabbath. What is amazing is no one in the church would argue with the Ten Commandments generally, as they do not believe in going out right now and murdering someone. No, that would be wrong. Adultery? No, that's wrong. The church knows this. The church knows the Ten Commandments and its tenets. However, this is the one that bothers them. The whole reason the Ten Commandments had to be done away with, because of the Sabbath. Keeping it is equal to not murdering. Think about that, because that's what Scripture says. This is important. Yet, this is diminished today. See, even those claiming that Yahusha consolidated the Ten Commandments into two miss that in order to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and your neighbor as yourself, guess what you have to do? You have to keep His Sabbath. You can't love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, according to Hebrews, because you are a in unbelief, an example of unbelief if you're not keeping the Sabbath. That's what he says. And he never changed his mind, according to Scripture. But Messiah and the apostles reaffirm this, and so does the early church. Yet we have forgotten today generally. And this is one of the largest issues of our age, and that's why we are covering this. Here's Deuteronomy. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, just like Yahuwah did on the seventh day. Don't you see this is the same language? There is no separating that practice from him, nor heaven, nor his patriarchs, who are listed as righteous. Yet if there was no law, how on earth could anyone measure right or righteousness without law? You cannot. As the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, six days shalt, or thou shalt, labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, Yahuwah thy God, Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Gentiles that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. You will notice Sabbath is within the Ten Commandments, yet it is also referenced many times outside of the commandments and in the New Testament, as it is cru crucial and critical, and always has been and always will be. Forget the Sabbath, forget creation. Forget the whole of foundation of Scripture and the existence of Yahuwah. See, this is what Peter in 2 Peter 3 was talking about. This is what he said we would forget, and we have, but no more, no longer. That's where this leads and why the enemy wishes to undermine it. Exodus 35, six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath. Of rest to the Lord, Yahuwah. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. This was serious, very serious. This mattered, and it still does. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. How exactly does anyone credibly take what Yahuwah calls a holy day and the Bible? never abolishes at any point as all of a sudden no longer being holy. It doesn't make any sense. This was so important in Israel those breaking Sabbath could face the death penalty. Why? When you keep this as a people, his blessings abound in that nation. 
as they did in Israel. See, they're in covenant. This is a covenant relationship. This is deep. This is serious. It's intense. As they once did in ancient Ophir as well. Kindle no fire is very specifically defined as not cooking. We are to prepare all of our meals for the Sabbath the day before. In other words, even idle time is given to him in meditation and relationship. That's what this is about. Think about this. The creator of all things loves you so much. He wants your time and attention with him. And he'll give you his. He asks for this one day a week in complete focus. We can all do this. And no matter whom we are, some condemn the church for meeting on Sunday, for instance. But let's be clear, that is impertinent to the Sabbath and not even a part of the discussion. It shouldn't be. Sabbath is your day with him. It has nothing to do with church. Yes, Messiah and the apostles in the early church all gathered on Saturday, on Sabbath. But they also spoke other days and taught other days. Again, the Roman church, which took over was never the early ecclesia. They didn't come from Turkey. See, Revelation is clear. It tells you where the seven ecclesias are that were first established. They're not in Rome. It was always a Pharisee manipulation, and Constantine just profaned it even more. That's all. Leviticus 23, six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Yehua. In all your dwellings, the entire nation was keeping the Sabbath. Wow. We believe this is the kind of thing we will see restored in the Philippines in time. Yes, we do. Because the prophecies of Messiah are there and very clear, as well as Isaiah and Ezekiel. Now, we're going to bring in the Book of Jubilees, which we have thoroughly tested and proven to be Scripture. What? In precedence, this is Scripture. Watch testing the Book of Jubilees, if you have not. This book was used as Torah. Yes, law. Six books of Moses in the Dead Sea Scroll community in Qumran or Bethabara, the actual biblical name for that community, of Levite priests where John the Baptist lived. Hmm. That's right, not Essenes. Their writings fully identified them as such, never once as Essenes. And the Essene headquarters was 25 miles south of Qumran in Ein Gedi. And a very fraudulent injection into the story from these same Pharisees. Adding their leaven to conceal this was the home of John the Baptist and his library or Bible. Hmm. Or canon of scripture. Yes. We find some of the most monumental doctrines of the New Testament derive not from anywhere in the Old Testament, which means they would be new And something would be very wrong. Scholars should be testing this, and they're not even bothering, which is disingenuous. But they do originate in the book of Jubilees. That's from Paul, Peter, John, and Luke, at least. And this is significant doctrine. This is a very serious topic. And this book needs to be restored to its rightful place. Again, watch that video. First, Jubilees prophesied that you and I, and those before us even, would forget the Sabbath. Jubilees 113, And they will forget all my law, and all my commandments, and all my judgments, and will go astray as to new moons, and Sabbaths, and festivals, feasts, and jubilees, and ordinances. In fact, Jubilees goes on to identify that the calendar would also get messed up pursuing a lunar calendar, which is Babylonian in origin, when the Bible sets forth a solar calendar. 
That's another topic we're working on, but it is a very big one, so not anytime soon, probably. It's funny, some Pharisee wrote that a Pharisee wrote Jubilees. That's, that's the claim, if you look it up. And that's as far as any other channel has ever gone in testing the book of Jubilees. Look up a Pharisee writing and say, oh, look, it was written by a Pharisee. There's a big problem. It is well recorded in practice that the Pharisees were forbidden to write even commentary in their beginning origins. 165 BC, which is when they started, by the way. There was no Pharisee party until after the Hasmonean revolt or really conquest. Didn't exist. They were brand new at that point. Same with the Sadducees. So pretty much the Sanhedrin. They kicked out the Aaronic bloodline priests who were in Qumran, Bethabara, where John the Baptist lived and operated. So how do you overlook that Pharisees were forbidden to even write commentary, to write anything, whether alone scripture, back in those days, up until essentially even the time of Messiah? It was even after that that the first so-called Pharisee writings, which we now call the Pharisees, even the Jewish Encyclopedia says this, the track is clear, Pharisees are now called rabbis. Phariseeism is Judaism. Judaism is not a biblical religion. Oh, it's in the Bible. It's rebuked. <laughs> it's against his commandments. It's there, but not in a good way. See, it would be truly ignorant of Pharisee history, doctrine, and there are place names in this book of Jubilees as well, which are dead in that time, written, which means it's written long before. Thus, there's no way Jubilees was even written when the copy was found in Qumran, even. Just as the book of Isaiah is a copy, not the original, of course. Jubilees also calls the Sabbath a great sign. Sign of what? Sign of relationship with the one true God, Yahuwah. Did he ever remove such sign? No. And here we have the book of Jubilees, affirming scripture, which you will find it always does, really. Why was Israel so blessed back in their righteous days, in the days of David and Solomon especially? And everyone who observes it and keeps Sabbath thereon from all his work will be holy and blessed throughout all days like unto us. How did holiness get redefined? Messiah never did so. The apostles never did so. Want to experience his true blessings? I'm not talking about money, though that will be included. Keep his Sabbath. After all, who does it hurt? How does it hurt you? It is treated by some as if it is evil somehow, yet Really? Spending time with Yahuwah could ever be defined as evil? What a ridiculous notion. Declare and say to the children of Israel the law of this day, both that they should keep Sabbath thereon, and that they should not forsake it. Why, why do they keep saying forsake it? They're forgetting it. Don't forget. Why, 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 why? Because they're going to forget. That's why. Yahuwah knows. Forsake it in the error of their hearts. What? It is error in our hearts if we forsake his Sabbath. And that is not lawful to do any work thereon, which is unseemly, to do thereon their own pleasure. So forsaking Sabbath is an error for our hearts. No wonder the enemy doesn't want us to keep it. He wants to put error in our hearts. So no work on the Sabbath and no pleasure. This is the recurring theme you will see in many scriptures over and over. Again, through the series, we're going to define this a little more, but we will cover in a later video, pleasure especially, is further defined, and we want to deal with that head on. 
Sabbath is not about us, folks. It's about Him. And those claiming this is work, how exactly can refraining from work now be called work? I mean, what an oxymoron that would be. But they still say that, don't they? They also say developing relationship with Yahuwah is work or works. Yet, if it were, then it would have to be forbidden on the Sabbath. Yet, that is what Sabbath is all about, is covenant relationship with Him. In other words, the Bible never defines developing relationship with Messiah as work. That would be ridiculous. And that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk, and that it is not lawful to draw water, or bring in or take out thereon through their gates any burden, which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwellings. So no food preparation in any sense on the Sabbath, and you're preparing the food in your own dwelling the day before. These are not hard rules. These are pretty easy to follow, really. I mean, it requires preparation, but they're not hard. Everything should already be made. In other words, less for us to focus on as we focus on Him and give Him this day. Even drawing water. Now, this was written in a day where it was work to draw water. You had to go to a well and actually draw it and then bring it, which would be carrying it into your gates, typically, because you didn't usually have a well within your gates, although maybe some did if they were wealthy. In our opinion, turning on your faucet no longer requires work. That's not work. But we have no issue with those not wanting to do that, but we don't worry about that. It is not work to turn a knob effortlessly. This isn't about legalism, folks. It's just about obedience. That's it. For those worried they might do something wrong at first, relax. The point is, give him a day every week. We observe it Friday sundown to Saturday at sundown. But there are several out there, even now, trying to figure out the biblical calendar, including us to some degree, and we are open to good research on the topic. So we're not married to that time frame necessarily, but that's what we're doing until it's been overturned by good, solid research. As of now, we see nothing which overturns it as of yet. In fact, even the Dead Sea Scrolls show that the Sabbath begins at sundown on Friday, essential. So you don't carry things in and out of the house or of your property because that's work. No deliveries, especially food. You don't order out. You don't have it catered. You don't even order the catering the day before. It's not about catering. It's about you preparing your food for the next day. The point is, we don't burden ourselves on this day either. That's it. Try not to require them to work. See, if you go to a restaurant, for instance, on the Sabbath, you are requiring workers to work. So, therefore, that is not Sabbath because you are breaking the Sabbath because you're forcing someone else to work. And that's really the narrative here. And that's why the whole nation did it at once. See, it was no big deal because there were no restaurants open on Saturday. It just didn't happen. In fact, there's a time when Jeremiah went and he closed the gates and didn't allow anyone to enter or leave the city. <laughs> that was pretty serious. But that's how serious the prophets were about this. And Yehoshua said he did not abolish the prophets. And he goes and reaffirms the Sabbath. So what do we say about that? What do we do about that? We follow his example. That's what we do. And every man who does any work thereon or goes a journey, generally no trips on the Sabbath, that can be difficult at times, but all of us can follow that. It's an issue of planning, really. For conferences, in fact, which we'll, we have conferences on Saturdays many times because that's when people can gather. Um, what we'll do is we'll fly before the Sabbath and we'll leave after it ended. Even if it has to be that day, we'll leave Saturday evening after Sabbath. So keep reading. 
or tills his farm. Now see, this is where even Constantine had no clue what the biblical Sabbath was, because in his declaring Sunday, the wrong day, the venerable day of the sun, you know, his god Mithra, the sun god, uh, and that's what he called it, as the Sabbath, when he changed the Sabbath, he said farmers could work on the Sabbath. But that is not scriptural. He obviously didn't know what he was talking about because he didn't know the Bible. He was not true to the Bible in any sense, really. He basically instituted Mithraism with an infusion of what he attempted with the Bible, and really, truly, horribly so. Whether in his house or any other place, and whoever lights a fire or rides on any beast or travels by ship on the sea, today we'd include airplanes, of course, and whoever strikes or kills anything or slaughters a beast or a bird or whoever catches an animal or a bird or a fish or whoever fasts or makes war on the Sabbaths, the man who does any of these things on the Sabbath, shall die. Ouch. See, this was very serious in Israel because the nation was in covenant with him and they were going to keep that covenant. And if you didn't, yes, you could face death. Now, they got away from it, of course, but they shouldn't have. And while they did and because they did, they were a blessed nation among all peoples. This is a sampling of a list of things not to do, but the theme is pretty simple here. No work on the Sabbath. Because he didn't work on the Sabbath. He set that example for us and created the Sabbath for us, for man. No food preparation. You prepare it the day before. Nothing that requires others to work. And instead, we spend that time with Yahuwah. That's it. It's not that complicated. No, you do not have to offer an animal sacrifice. Messiah did that for us, but he did not replace the Sabbath. Never, ever does any scripture say that. doesn't happen. So what do we do? On Sabbath, we pray some. We study a lot. We may even watch a YouTube teaching or take in even a movie sometimes. And sometimes we just plain rest, even physically. If you have children at home, you have to tend to them, of course. You just prepare their meals the day before. Just spend time with them and with Him. Teach them how to keep the Sabbath, how to rest in Him, how to develop relationship with him. You read the Bible with them. You tell them Bible stories. There are so many amazing stories in the Bible that will blow your mind. You look at the story of Gideon, who was the least in his household in all of Israel. His household was the least of all the households in Israel. I mean, this guy is the lowest of the low in society. And Yahuwah used him to tear down the statue of Baal and idols. And then he used him to lead Israel into battle against the enemy. And he did so under miraculous circumstances, so as that with a, a, a troop of maybe 300 soldiers in the very end, as Yahuwah weeded out everyone down to that, Gideon led them to succeed in defeating an enemy of thousands. The story is amazing. It's like David and Goliath. There's so many things like that, and they're not just stories. This is truth. This is history. These are fact, because the Bible is real. We turn our phones off, typically, but we will show you Messiah teaches the tenor of this day, especially. It's not a thou shalt not day. That's not what it's about, and you don't make it about that. And the Pharisees tried to box it in wrongly as such. And that's what was wrong. He was condemning that legalism. He condemned legalism. He didn't support it. Nor is Sabbath legalism. It is not. It is a day in which you minister to your family, minister to him. And yes, it is permissible to minister and do good to others. It is not a day for parties, but a day of ministry. This is our ministry, and this will provide the fuel 
that we all need for the week. We admit it was not always easy at first, but once you get used to it, and you will, you will find this the greatest blessing of your entire lifetime. There is no replacing this time with Him, and there is no other who deserves our time more than the Creator. We make Him a priority, even over our daily needs like food. Imagine the statement that sends to Him, the thanks for His creation that we're reminding ourselves every week. And if you are keeping the Sabbath, you don't question His creation because you're worshiping as a part of the creation cycle on a weekly basis as you should. You don't question that He is God. The Sabbath originates at creation, not with Moses, and we'll explore that far deeper and prove it out completely. Oh, we will. It was made for mankind, therefore man is intended to keep it, and it's not going to be taken away from mankind or why created in the first place. Yahusha is Lord of the Sabbath, and if he is your Lord, then it's time to keep his Sabbath in which he is Lord of. Breaking the Sabbath is unbelief. Sabbath is a sign of belief and relationship, really covenant with him. The new covenant still includes it, as it was never abandoned, and there it is in Hebrews and other writings, even from Paul. And we will delve deeper into that. The Sabbath is a delight, and having kept it for a number of years now, I assure you, we find it a delight, and all the guys would agree. It serves to keep things in perspective, really. It is forever, perpetual, and everlasting. It never passes away, just as there is no abandoning creation. It happened and remains. And this is a creation concept, not one from Moses. Yahuwah even stopped raining manna on the Sabbath so Israel could keep it. He didn't put any stumbling blocks in their way. In Israel, breaking the Sabbath could mean death. This was and is serious. Paul affirmed the Sabbath, and breaking the Sabbath is pollution. Sabbath is a day of rest, spending time with Yahuwah, refreshing, rejuvenating, restoring. It is about relationship with Him, not rules and laws and legalism. And it is never a burden, truly. It is not legalism. That is the Pharisee way. It is not Jewish and never was. It is not Judaizing and never was, as that would require the apostles to be hypocrites, calling themselves Judaizers, and they were not. In the next video, we will prove the origin of the Sabbath at creation, and it is a terrific video. Then, we'll prove Messiah kept and affirmed the Sabbath. Then we'll prove the apostles kept and affirmed the Sabbath. And then we'll prove that the early church kept and affirmed the Sabbath in history, even from the Catholic Church. Don't miss it. Thank you for watching our Sabbath series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. Like us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space, original. Share this video with others and check out our website at thegodculture.com. Always remember to prove all things for yourself. Yah bless all.